how are you lot? Some of you will be here for the very first time because you'll have found me through the title or the hashtag because you will be specifically looking for an answer to a question. And that is, how on earth do I make this style arc midi dress? It's supposed to be easy, but I'm feeling very confused, which is how I felt when I looked at the instructions for it. Even as somebody who's sewn many, many dresses, I'm not saying I'm a professional, I'm not saying I've sewn them well, I've just worked my way through lots of patterns and learnt a few things along the way. I looked at the Style Arc midi dress instructions and felt completely flummoxed. So I, I had a look at their tutorials online and then it all became clear. But I thought, this doesn't have to be this fancy for a first time sewist who just wants to bang out a dress in an afternoon and wear it that evening this could be made simpler and quicker so I thought right I'm going to do that and I'm going to film how I do it because specifically because I'd encouraged a friend of mine to just start sewing her own clothes she said she wanted to I said get on with it then you're never going to be able to do it unless you try it's like anything in life so uh I said to her, try this dress. I, I suggested a few different dresses. And from the um, the line drawings for this dress, I thought that's probably the easiest one to start with. So I recommended it to her, which was silly because I made an assumption that it was going to be easy because it said on the packet, for a beginner, it's easy. <laughs> and then of course I discovered it was slightly complicated, more than it needed to be. So as I've said, the dressing is dressing. The dress pattern is by Style Arc. It's the midi dress. It's basically a front bodice, a back bodice, a front dress, skirt, back skirt, pockets. And then if you follow the patterns in the instruction, if you follow the instructions in the pattern, you have a lined bodice but the way that I've done this is with bias binding around the neck and around the armholes. I've done French seams along here and along here but I've just done bog standard zigzag stitch seams for the skirt. So I'm just going to show you what this looks like and hopefully in a bit I'll take a bit, bit of better footage maybe outside and garden it's a lovely spring day okay here we go so this is what it looks like it's roomy it's meant to be roomy it's a pull over your head jobby so there's no buttons to deal with no zips to deal with and it's just it's lovely i'm wearing it obviously with a t-shirt underneath with a ruffle neck that goes perfectly and that was just a happy accident um but it would be just lovely without a top underneath because the armhole comes up far enough that your bra, where does my bra end? My bra ends here. So you don't end up with big armpit bra vision, visuals, visible. I feel weird because I know that there might be some new people here and not just my regular, my favorites, you know, all you guys who come and watch whatever I shove out at any point. Pockets, just proving to you that it's not just slits in the side of the skirt. So it's got a little gathered waist. It's one of these dresses that I think is really versatile. You can wear it layered up in the winter and on its own with some flip flops in the warmer weather. Um, and you can eat a massive meal. And it's just, it's great. I really like the shape of the shoulders I think they call these grown on sleeves because there's no seaming and setting of an arm and I think I think that with the adaptions adaptations that I've made this is a really easy dress so here comes a terrible video that I took over three days because 
the way my life is set up, I steal moments to do my crafting. Hello. <laughs> it's my dog. My rescue dog, buddy. You smell a like cow poo. Lovely. I've got another rescue dog. Come here. This one is Margot. That black and white one's Bunny. This one's Margot. She's a toy poodle. She's got a terrible attitude. But we love her. Well, at least I do. Debatable though sometimes, isn't it, Margot? What was I saying? Yes, I took the video over <laughs> three days because I'm constantly interrupted. I even interrupt myself. And I get distracted and I start too many things all at once. <laughs> and please mind my nails in it. I went to a ball three weeks ago. I painted my nails. I never paint my nails these days. Not because, not since I've become really eco-conscious. Conscious. I can't speak. Um, and I don't have any nail polish remover. So I still have nail polish on most of my nails. And they just look horrendous in the video. And now I've told you not to look at them. You're going to look at them. Right, six minutes of introducing a terrible video. <laughs> but it does show you the things you need to know. I haven't shown you how to make bias binding. Just Google that. I haven't shown you how to stitch on the bias binding fully because other people on the internet have done a much better job than me. Same with French seams. But the rest of it, the, just the general construction, I've included that. But look, if you've made a dress or two, you're gonna feel like I'm trying to teach granny to suck eggs, so don't watch it. Thank you very much for being here. I could put that at the end, couldn't I? I could put that bit at the end. Right, here's the video. When embarking on sewing a dress, first things first, make oneself a cup of tea, complete with drip stain. Tidy up your space so that you feel like you're in the right Zen mood. If you can choose a day that is drich, rainy and disgusting, outside oh it doesn't look too bad then all the better for i feel like sewing is a cozy endeavor for for the daytime i know many people find it a lovely thing to do in the evening but not me daytime what am i talking about i'm just gonna have a little tidy around clear the decks a bit and then i'll show you the next phase dog's barking. This is the pattern. It's the Stylark Montana midi dress. You can order it as a PDF and print it at home, A4 style, or you can order it as an A0 and you can send it off to get printed. Since it's quite a loose and non-structured, not tailored dress, I've gone for the size that will accommodate my bust. So I've measured my bust and then I've compared that to the finished size of the bust. And I just held my tape measure around my chest and stretched it out until I thought, yeah, that will feel nice. And I sat down with it because sometimes when you're standing up, something might skim your bust nicely. And as soon as you sit down, it's it's pulling. So I did all of that. I've chosen my size. And for this, I'm making the size 14 which when you cut it out is the red the red one i've cut out all my pattern pieces and i've made sure that i have notched like this where it says to notch That way you can line up and make sure that you have got, oh, not even recording it, you've got the things, the pattern pieces, attaching to the other pattern pieces in the right way. Look at the state of my nails, ignore that. I don't have any nail polish remover and I don't wear nail polish very often so there's no point in me buying any. It can just wear off. 
Next thing I'm going to do is something that's called stay stitching and that just means that any curved um, edges of your fabric don't stretch out of shape. So what I will do is I'll flick you round, hold on. I will set my needle stitch length to quite long and I'll just sew all the way around here. I'll probably keep it relatively close to the edge so that I don't have to unpick it at a later date, but it doesn't really matter where you put it. And around the armholes, I'll do that for the front and the back. And while I'm at it, I'll take the skirt pieces and the, whoops, the top part of the skirt where you're gonna do the gathers, I will stitch, I will stitch two rows of long, stitches along here really isn't going to matter where i'll probably do them like that and then that will help you gather up the skirt there we are i've done the stay stitching things to remember when you're cutting out if you think you're going to get muddled between the front and the back just mark which one is which however you like you could do it with some tailor's chalk a friction pen whatever you want shove a pin in the other thing to know is this i've not seen this in a pattern before but i'm sure it's not unusual i'm just not as experienced as some what they've done here is they have shown you that this is where the pocket's going to go and this is the orientation of the pocket but if you are new there's a there's a chance that you might have cut out that shape from there from your skirt and you don't want to do that <laughs> i'm doing the version here that isn't um having a lined bodice so i am going to stitch together the tops of the sleeves and i'm gonna do french seams you can do what you like, pink and shear it, flat fell seam, overlock it, whatever. You can look up how to do different seams. I'm not going to show that here, but I'm going to do French seams. And then I'm going to bias bind around the neck. It's the next day now and sewing conditions are not as good because it is sunny. <laughs> Let's tackle the bias binding. I couldn't find any bias binding that I already had that I liked so I've just cut some from the fabric of the, the main fabric of the dress on the bias um just google how to make bias binding and you'll find a really good tutorial there's a hundred on there more than a hundred probably a million so I've got this I am going to sew these strips together and then iron them in half I French seamed the shoulders together and now I'm going to iron the seam to the back. I don't know if that's the right way, but that's what I'm doing. And then I'm going to pin on some bias binding. I've stitched the front bodice to the back bodice. This is the back. I've done French seams, excuse my nail polish, and I've pressed them to the back so they're nice and flat now i'm going to take my bias binding here we are this is the second time i've done this because the first time i did what i always do because i never learn from my mistakes and i stitched it on the wrong side you need to sew this to the right side of your fabric so the piece of fabric that will show when you're wearing it okay and you're going to stitch it half a centimeter all the way around you can pin this in place if you wish I don't bother it's not this is not an unwieldy thing especially when you're wearing when you're using this kind of sticky linen stuff you know as I mean it's not slippery when you get all the way around the way you want to finish this is you fold the bottom piece over 
and then you flop over the top piece and you keep stitching. Where's my pedal? Until you're well over. Oh, what was I recording? Till you're well over, you know you've got your overlap. Oh, what was I recording again? Oh no, <laughs> not a professional. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to back pedal a bit. I don't want too much bulk, so I'm going to snip that bit off there. This is how we're looking. This is the front. What you need to do now is snip the curve here and then iron up the bias binding like that. So this seam here becomes really crisp. If you're worried you're going to cut through this stitching, put a pin there and that will prevent your scissors from closing over the stitching. Try not to pull this edge of the bias binding outwards. You want it you want it to remain pushed in because because you do. <laughs> you don't want a freely bias binding. You want it to stick in. If you find your bias binding is flaring. I think what you need to do is shorten the amount of bias binding you've got. But I'm not a professional. I don't make my things to sell. This is not a tutorial to teach the masses. This is just for my mate. And if you're lucky, or unlucky, probably unlucky, I'll upload it to my main YouTubes. Here we have the inside of the front bodice with the bias binding pressed nicely. Now you're going to fold your bias binding over and fold it again until you've got that seam there as your edge. Just put it down slightly. There we go. That will make it really super neat. And then shove a pin there and go all the way around and do that. I'll just show you again. Take your bias binding here, fold it so that these raw edges are meeting, and then flip the whole lot over until you can see your seam there. And pop a pin in. You see? You go all the way round. Here we go, all pinned down. Now I'm going to stitch all the way around. So making sure that I've got a bobbin, th ooh, sorry about that. Making sure I've got a bobbin thread that is not going to show too much here. Or if I wanted it to show, make sure that it was a colour that would show up. Excuse the state of my ironing board. As is very evident here, I did not have matching thread. <laughs> and you can really see, you can really see all my wibbly wobbly stitching, but never mind. 
I've pulled out my stay stitches. That's what those little threads are. Next, I'm going to sew the um, sides together. I'm going to do French seams again. The only reason why is because when somebody's looking up your armhole, it's nice to not it's nice to be able to see a neat finish, but I'm not going to bother with the skirt because I want to put um, inseam pockets and it's a fuss doing French seams and doing inseam pockets. So I'm not going to bother with that. And nobody's going to be looking up my skirt at my seams. So I will French seam this edge here in case somebody looks down my armpit. <laughs> and then I'm going to apply the bias binding in exactly the same way to my armhole and then I'll do the same there. See you in a minute. There we are. That is the bodice finished with for now so put that to one side and get your skirt out. Lay your skirt out and Hopefully, you will have put notches where your pocket is supposed to be positioned. But if you're like me and you're a bad professional, <laughs> you won't have put notches. So I'm just going to get my pattern, line it up. I should do this the other way around. Let's just snip these. So there's one there. And one there. Oh, big stretch. And now I need to do the same with the other one. I find their instructions on how to do their inseam pocket on this pattern and on their website very confusing. So I'm just going to do it the way that I've done it before that works for me and is extremely easy. So let's do it that way. So get your pocket pieces and lay one of them on the side of your front of your skirt, lining up the notches on the pocket and on the side of the skirt. And then do exactly the same on the back. And do it for both sides, left and right. Then... We're going to sew one centimetre. I've put pins in where these notches are. That one's hiding its head. Don't we all just want to hide our heads? We're going to sew one centimetre seam from this pin all the way down to this pin. So it's in between the notches. Now you want to flip your pocket and press that really, really well. And if you want to, you can run a line of stitching down there. It will just mean that when your pocket is in like that, it will lie really nice and flat. So I would recommend that you do that. There we go. I've run a line of stitching on the what will be the inside of the pocket. Now, fling this back on the floor, or at least I will, just to demonstrate what happens next. Lie it down with the side of the fabric that is going to be the bit that faces people, you know, the right side, and stick the pockets out like elephant ears, and then fling on <laughs> the other side of the skirt, making sure that right sides are touching one another. Um, you probably know what that means, but that would mean that if this was floral, this would be the nice flowery bit and this would be the inside bit. And just line up the seams and line up the pockets. Bunny, you're not going to help me, are you? Then what you're going to do, line these up all nice and neat, shove a few pins in and then you're going to stitch a centimetre all the way down all the way around your pockets, like that. All the way around, all the way, all the way, all the way. All the way down here. Now, I'm not going to bother French seaming these, so once this is done, I'm going to zigzag stitch just to make sure that there's no fraying. 
Right, as with everything, my dogs are interrupting me now. Yes. Um, so I might have to leave this for another day. Everything I do takes a few days and that's okay. I just don't ever get something done in one afternoon. But as you can see here, we've got a pocket. Just check before you zigzag the edges that you've caught all of the pocket and you haven't got a little loose part. Next, we need to gather up the waist so that it fits inside the bodice. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna stitch mine with a French seam. So what I will need to do is put my bodice inside out inside my skirt. So here's my skirt, right side around with the pockets. Now, the front and the back of the skirts are identical. So here's my bodice, right way around. And I'm going to turn it inside out. And I'm going to tuck it down inside my skirt. So that we've got the insides touching the insides. Line up your seams. And pop in a pin. If you can hear a funny noise, that's Margot licking her tummy. Find out where the middle is of your bodice by pulling the seams together. And just, I'm just going to do a finger press. And find out where the middle of your skirt is. Finger press. And then join those two together so that you can make sure that your gathers are relatively even. This fabric is not sliding very nicely on my um, gathering stitches. I wish I'd done it by hand with thicker thread now. This pattern, if I was to make it again, I'd probably make a fuller skirt. So I would literally just add a couple of centimetres either side, just so that I could have more gather. Because that doesn't feel like much gather at all. Let's just put that together, my finger pressed centre. And you're going to repeat that for the back. I've pinned the, the gathered skirt to the bodice and now I'm going to stitch half a centimetre all the way around. So what we've got here now is a dress. It's now an actual dress with a ruffly seam here, which don't want do we? Let's pop the bodice back inside. Now being very very careful we're gonna cut away half of this all the way along and then we'll open it up, turn it all completely inside out, give it a really good press and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Turn it inside out, pockets. And just give the bodice a nice press, just to open up that bit of stitching, that seam, just to make that seam nice and neat, so that when you do the next row of sewing, half the work is already done for you. That's nicely pressed. Pop the bodice inside the skirt again. Oh, come on. 
Here you go. That's it. <laughs> Come on. There. It's inside again. Pocket. Inside. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch just under a centimetre, I would say, all the way along, making sure that this seam is not kind of folded in on itself. You, you don't want to be stitching it and for it to be like that because it will be messy on the other side. Pin it if you wish. I'm just going to go for it. But first of all, I'm just going to go and check on the supper. Here we go then. For the sake of transparency, can you see this funny line here? That's because somehow I stitched that to there. <laughs> It'll be fine after a wash. I've still got to take out the um, gathering stitching there and just catch any little loose threads. Give it a really good press and also do the hem. Best practice says hang it for 24 hours before you do the hem. But for a sack of spuds dress like this, I'm not really too bothered. It looks massive, but who knows? Who knows what it's going to look like? I did want it baggy. Can't get that thread off. Yeah, I did want it baggy, but... Let's just wait and see. It'll be another one of these comfortable dresses, a layering piece. If I find it is too big, I might just put some ribbon here so I can tie it at the back or some elastic. We'll see. Might be too tight. That was the video. <laughs> Please don't slate me in the comments. There's no need to do that. <laughs> um, if you want to stick around, then you'll find on this channel all sorts of Probably other things. Curry day, not got any of the rice up super duper. Yeah, just heat the whole lot up really hot. Yeah. Yeah. Interruptions. If you stick around, you'll find family life, cooking, Sewing, knitting, gardening, dog walking, just general stuff here in the southwest of England. I'm quite an old fashioned kind of person, really, uh, but I don't lead an excitable life. I'm not a jet setter. I, I live up on a hill and I don't like leaving the hill. I'm very happy up here in my home with my children and my pets and my husband and all of my wool and all of my fabric and all of my plants and all of the things. I'm never bored, I'm always occupied and I've always got a song going in my head. Today I'm singing Crazy by Patsy Cline. And I'm sitting on a squeaky chair. This week, aside from making this dress, I have made several scrunchies out of an old silk pillowcase. I have made, but not finished, some rope bowls. These are gifts for a friend. Um, I'm going to put a little leather thing on there. I've got mending to do. I've done mending. Um, I've been looking after my youngest son, Wilf. He's had mesenteric lymphodentitis or adentitis ad, adenitis something to do with swollen glands in his abdomen probably an after effect of covid which he actually had months ago two weeks ago bill had covid so he's my eldest he was home all week and i forgot to mention that on my last video um what else did i want to tell you Nothing, because this isn't a proper vlog, is it? No, so I'm off. Toodaloo. <laughs>
Also, if you're new around here and you struggle to make Yorkshire puddings, popovers, then watch my video that I'll link below. It's my dad's recipe, it's fail safe, and it is so easy. I get messages all the time from people saying, could never make them, and now I can. Please thank your dad.